been said that there are documented examples of demonic possession, ghosts, miracles, and similar would-be proofs of supernatural forces and beings. Eyewitnesses give testimony said to corroborate these magical or otherworldly contacts with our world. Pentecostals attest to the spirit overtaking them, causing them to speak in tongues. In the name of Jesus, you be made whole by the power of God. Isn't that something called a moshoko domazata? Mata toto moton doichi kisha kada kapoko to koto kalaka moshiti. Kali shika doboko to la bakatai shakapo choko leka mokotea. I love you. Catholic priests swear to have verified demonic possessions, which they expelled through exorcism. <laughs> Muslims show us birds calling the name of Allah. The thing is, however, these astonishing and revelatory tales always seem to validate the specific ideas about the ethereal plane that the witness is biased toward to start with. Muslim accounts validate Islamic teaching about ghosts, demons, miracles, etc. Hindu experiences validate Hindu teachings. It's all culturally relevant and dependent. Never do we hear of a Jewish child possessed by demons from hell. Never does the Episcopalian become overcome by the spirit and begin speaking in tongues. I love you. The description of near-death experience is not universal, but in each culture or the meme spreads, it has unique characteristics specific to those cultures. Catholics who claim to be possessed are very different from Vudans who claim possession. Yet all tales of Catholic verified possessions share many commonalities unique to only Catholic tales of possessions. Think about that. Why would it be so if the events were all real? For example, it may interest you to know that the idea that extraterrestrials visit us in saucer-shaped craft carrying little green men only became a trope in the 1940s and 50s. Where were they before that? The idea of abductions and probes developed in the 70s. There are no tales from the 19th century about close encounters of the third kind. Watch a Pentecostal tent revival and compare it to a black church when the spirit moves. These two people are being influenced all right, but not by the same God and not by the same spirits. They're being influenced by confirmation bias and subtle, perhaps subconscious cues. That's not magic. That's human psychology. Thank you. Todd, Sonia, and Colton Burpo are with us now. Good morning to all of you. Nice Good morning. to see you. Colton, I'm going to talk to you in a second. Well, let me talk to you first, Todd, and get this right out of the way. People are going to say, this is a pastor. Yes. This is a believer. This is a man of the cloth. He wants desperately to believe this, and he wants others to believe it, and that's why this story is out there. How do you respond to people like that? Well, at first, we were surprised. We doubted ourselves. We never anticipated to talk to our son about these things. And what caught my attention or what grabbed mine is when he could tell me where I was while he was in surgery. The surgeon couldn't tell me that. The nurses in there couldn't. My wife couldn't tell me where I was praying, but he could tell me. And, and you asked him how he knew that, and he said, because I could see you. I exactly. was sitting, I think he believe it, even said, I was sitting in Jesus' lap yes. as you were doing all these things. So you were cynical, both of you, a little bit at first, until you started to hear these things. Exactly. Some of the other things he said, okay, I'm sitting in Jesus' lap. Everyone in heaven has wings. Mine were a little smaller than most people's. Nobody is old in heaven. I like that part. Yeah, I think a lot of people like that. I mean, did you start to share these stories with other people, and did anyone look at you and say, you folks are crazy, you've just been through a traumatic experience? Sonia? Um... We didn't share at first, and then once we started sharing, people were amazed, and, and they, they were encouraged by what we were sharing with them. 
Colton, today, so you're 11, this all happened to you when you were four. How vivid are your memories today? Can you still close your eyes and remember exactly what you think heaven looked like, exactly what Jesus looked like, all those things? Well, I remember most of it, but since time has come by, you forget. And when you say nobody in, in heaven is old, uh, they all, I mean, did not, you saw nobody like in their 60s, 70s, 80s up there? No, saw them in their 20s, 30s at oldest. I, I think a question a lot of people would like to ask you, Colton, is what did heaven itself look like? I mean, is it the way I talk it, about it to my kids? Is it above the clouds? Is everybody float? What's it like? Well, there's a, va there's a lot of colors. There are a lot of people and a lot of animals. You know, I think the story that, that's going to get a lot of people's attention, Sonia and, and Todd, is the story he told. He came back and he met the child that you had miscarried. And that was mm -hmm. a couple of years earlier. Mm -hmm. Had you ever told him about that incident? Mm -hmm. Not at all. Not at all. So, now, how would you explain it to a three-year-old that a baby died in your tummy? So. No, we, and it was, a, it was, I mean, I don't think we were still even talking about it. It was a private hurt that we didn't even share with our friends, and can you well as our family. Can you describe the moment he said that to you? Uh, a, sh a shocking, but then a relief that she's okay, which we didn't know she was a she, which we didn't know she was a she. And tell me about Pop. Colton, tell me about Pop. Well, Pop, he was very big huge wings he had curly hair big smile and he was really nice you know um this is it, what's amazing is this has become a new york times bestseller i mean for nonfiction. i guess the simple explanation is there are a lot of people out there who want to believe or at least want to question yeah is that the way you look at it well i think for us like when he told us about his sister in heaven that we hadn't told him about another one of those holy cow moments okay that okay he can't make this up he can't invent this no memory was planted but the peace that came over us and the healing you know just the the wow i have a daughter waiting for me i think a lot of people need that type of hope and healing too mm -hmm. and i think that's what a lot of people are finding when they hear colton's testimony so that's what you want people to take away from this a sense of peace perhaps mm -hmm. hope healing uh... they know what they have to look forward to Todd, Colton, Sonia, thank you all very much. The book is called Heaven is for Real, and they'll be back in our fourth hour to talk to Kathy Lee and Hoda. We're back after your local news.